In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We keep today the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, one of the patrons of our order. She carried the message of the resurrection to the disciples of the Lord. And so conscious of the times when we fail to carry the message of resurrection joy in our lives, let us call to mind our sins. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Song of Solomon. The bride responds, Upon my bed by night I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. I will rise now and go about the city, in the streets and in the squares. I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but found him not. 
the watchmen found me as they went about the city. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found him whom my soul loves. The word of the Lord. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting, my body pines for you, like a dry weary land without water. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life, my lips will speak your praise. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. Alleluia. Tell us what you saw along the way, the tomb I saw of the living Christ and the glory of the risen one. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. But Mary stooped down, stood, stood weeping outside the tomb and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know it that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he, what, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Twice Mary carries an urgent message about Christ to the disciples, but only once does she preach. 
The first time she takes a message to the disciples in the gospel we've just heard, the message is about a missing Christ. His body has gone. She does not know where the Lord is. The message is ambiguous, the message of the empty tomb. But the second time she carries a message, she truly preaches, because now she carries the positive message of the resurrection of the Lord. Here is altogether good news, news which will transform the lives of those who receive it, news which is totally unambiguous, totally positive, incomprehensible, but nonetheless determined. The Lord has risen. The Lord is alive. The Lord has encountered Mary and set her free from her sorrow. Mary becomes a preacher in that moment that the Lord encounters her and calls her by her name. Because when she hears the Lord, she cannot but speak of what the Lord says to her. And so there's a truth about what it means to be a preacher contained in this brief encounter which we have with Mary Magdalene in the gospel today. To be a preacher is to speak of the resurrection as altogether good news, not ambiguous, though challenging, and news that sets us free, news which is refracted as good news not only for the whole world, but for me, for you, for us together. We have been set free, and so we speak of the Lord who comes to set the whole world free. The message that we proclaim is, is no theory. It's no abstract truth. It's something which we have tasted, something which has made an impact on our own lives, something to which we must give a witness with our entire lives. And if that's the essence of what it means to be a preacher seen in the life of Mary Magdalene, Jesus' words of advice to Mary, do not cling to me, point to, I think, one of the temptations which accompanies the life of any preacher. To cling to Jesus is, of course, no bad thing in one sense. To cling to Jesus, to beg that our lives be conformed to his life, that he be with us in every moment of our life, well, that's no bad thing. But the type of clinging, it seems to me, that Jesus is speaking against when he says to Mary, don't hold on to me, and refers to his future ascension, is a type of clinging which tries to keep Christ in one place. Of having found Christ here, we try to subdue Christ, to cling to him, to subdue that movement of the resurrection outwards to the ends of the world and to all times. And so if we are sometimes tempted to retreat from the world, to hide in those places where we know the Lord will console us, where in the past we have encountered the Lord, the Lord says to us, do not cling, go with me. Allow the dynamism, the flow of my resurrection to go with you to the ends of the earth. For the message which we receive is a message which is in no way diluted by being given away. The preacher gives away what they have received and in no way loses or has that great gift diminished. In fact, we give away in order to keep. We do not cling to the Lord because the Lord has grasped us. We are used by the Lord as instruments of his loving mercy, used to proclaim that liberating truth to the ends of the earth, that great dynamism of the resurrection, which will go out from the rising of Christ through every age and history until we are gathered together around the Lord and preaching is no longer necessary. Let us stand and pray. In your mercy, O Lord, deliver your people from the pestilence that presently afflicts them. To those who are sick, grant health in mind and body. To those who are in fear or in isolation, grant peace of mind and the consolation of your Holy Spirit. 
To those who care for the sick and all who are in danger, grant your protection and courage. Welcome those who have died into your eternal rest. Console those who grieve. And as by your grace we work to establish your kingdom, grant that we may be a sign of hope for the world through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you give us companionship, by their intercession sure support. So that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Eus Sabaoth, Plenus Eugenia Terra, Gloria Tua,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save our Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, O Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.